Hello, it's um, Paul Wood at Twistle Stick. Um, it's Neil Cook, Creative Managing Director of Castor and Partners. Hello. Hi, Neil. How are you getting on? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Got a cold of you? A little, little bit. It's that time, time of year. <laughs> two little rugrats at home, covered in slime, <laughs> giving it to daddy. <laughs> cool. Well, not cool, but um, we'll, we'll crack on. So if we could kick off with a bit of your um, career highlights or summary of your career to date. Sure. Uh, well, I kind of come through the copywriter side of things. I always wanted to be a writer, be a creative writer. Um, studied literature at university back in the day. I won't say how long ago. Um, and when you're studying literature, you want to be a writer. There's kind of only really two career paths open to you. I really, realistically, one is journalism. The other was getting into advertising. Yeah. It was always my desire to, to do the latter rather than the former. I consider myself quite creative, so uh, yeah. that's the route I pursued. Uh, and I suppose my first break, if you like, was getting a job in-house with Electronic Arts, the computer games people, yeah. back in the mid-90s when gaming was kind of a small, you know, spotty teenage boy's bedroom thing, uh, before it really exploded and became yeah. a major entertainment activity like it like it is today it has been for the last decade or decade or so uh, and i was employed as uh, their in-house copywriter developed an in-house creative team yeah and then it's kind of an internal agency that worked across uh, electronic arts uh releases uh, across the whole of western europe yeah i was creative director in-house there and then the uh the agency who had the ea account in north america opened a mm. shop over in london and with the team were kind of transplanted into that shop because we had all the uh, local consumer knowledge and the client relationships, uh, understood the markets in Western Europe, and from thence uh, was uh, integral to building the EA Sports brand. The, the line I always throw in on occasions like this uh, and on my CV is that uh, I was part of the team that helped build EA Sports from a zero dollar to a billion dollar brand. Really Which is really kind of pretty impressive, uh, exciting, yeah. formative experience in advertising, is what I have to say. Then, after a, a couple of shorter stints, um, I came and joined Castor and Partners about seven years ago. Uh, yeah. We are global agency of record for Red Bull, have been since the brand's inception. And yeah. uh, I was employed initially as a creative director here, uh, and for the last couple of years, I've been uh, managing creative director. And um, tell us about Castor and Partners. What's well, about? Um, KMP uh, the, have a very long-standing relationship with Red Bull. Um, yeah. Johannes Castor, who uh, is the agency founder, uh, still to this day uh, working on the on the Red Bull account, um, wrote the Red Bull Gives You Wings line back in the day before the brand had even launched. Has cool. a long-standing relationship with the, the Red Bull brand founder, Dietrich Mateschitz. Um, and so that's kind of a bedrock client for us. Um, yeah. Wherever there's a key Red Bull hub around the world, there's a KMP network agency uh, supporting Red Bull in that territory. But also, as you know, wholly independent agency mm. looking to grow their business and find more clients locally uh, to grow the agency. Fine. Um, so you've mentioned a few sort of agencies you've worked with in the past. I'm sure, you've come in, in contact with lots of interesting characters in terms of career advice yeah. that you've been given or you've given out yourself? Any, what's the best bit you've been given? Well, the, 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 the line that I always come back to, it's yeah. a bit of a mantra, and it wasn't said to me as an individual, but it's, a, it's a Dave Trott quote that, okay. I, yeah. that I live by, which is, hard work beats talent. And this is something that took me years to realise. And I think when you're a young creative and you imagine that you're quite talented and you're working on interesting products and interesting brands, you, you, maybe this was just me, but I think you think you can coast, but you can't coast. And, and I think the number of times uh, in your career you will find that mm. staying later and working hard and thinking harder and going back to the brief and, and putting all, uh, all the effort that's required in to get to the right result will pay off more than licking your finger and sticking it in the air and hoping that inspiration will strike. I think creativity is a process, and if you uh, dig deep and work through that process uh, in a professional way, you'll get to a great result. You touched on inspiration there. Yeah. The most inspirational people um, that you've worked with, who would you, who sort of stands out for you? Well, I've been, I think, very lucky to mm. have worked for, with, and learned yeah. from some, you know, kind of really inspiring creative directors through my career. 
uh, when I first worked on EA Sports, the guy who founded that agency was Jeff, a guy called Jeff Odeon, uh, American guy, big personality, uh, yeah. demanded the absolute best. Um, subsequently, I worked with uh, uh, Bruce Crouch, who's uh, uh, was at yeah. BBH, yeah. BBHCD. Yeah, yeah. Great guy, very different style to Jeff. Uh, he knew his sports, football, as you would expect. He's Peter Crouch's dad, inside <laughs> out. Uh, very supportive of me and my creative partner at the time when we were working on, on launching uh, FIFA uh, annually as, a, as global creative leads. Um, James Sinclair, who was a great CD yeah. I worked under for a couple of years. And then, of course, latterly, Johannes Kastner, who's you know not just a CD, he's actually grown an agency network that still bears his name, and was you know, one of the instigators behind Red Bull as a brand, and that now it's a global behemoth. So you know some really interesting and inspiring characters along the way. Not not bad. Not yeah, bad. Some good, some not good bad. Some good, good ones people some good ones. to <laughs> to steal working methodologies from <laughs> and claim they're your own. <laughs> um, big creative briefs. I know you've mentioned a few interesting ones. You probably had your fingers. Or got involved with yeah. Um, what's the biggest one you've had the chance to work, or the best one you've had the chance to get your teeth into? Well, it, my twin experience is really EA Sports, yeah. uh, which was which was a nothing, which we helped to grow into something. So that's very exciting and rewarding because yeah. you're really at the ground up, and that was a big project. You know, hom homogeneity across mm -hmm. EA Sports as a brand in all territories. Difficult to achieve, difficult to do consistently and do it well. Yeah. But also. A different point in my career and in the brand's life cycle coming into into Red Bull. That is an ongoing campaign. Uh, it has many different facets, many different mm -hmm. faces to different consumer targets, but it is a, a, a single campaign. And each year we are called upon to you know top the last thing that the brand did. And how do you do that when Red Bull consistently tops itself? You know, it comes. You know, yeah. how do you? Top of Stratos, you know. Yeah. And you come up with a great new event idea that might go global, as well as the core campaigns that communicate the product. That's the, that's the real challenge, you know, evolving and growing an already super successful brand. Um, if you were to summarise the current state of the creative, the creative industry as a whole, or sort of, or certainly the bits that have an impact on yourself, yeah, how would you summarise it? Well, I think it's incredibly vibrant and healthy. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm wrong or naive. Uh, I remember, uh, like, t I remember old father time. Um, back at the turn of the millennium when digital shook everything up yeah. and all, you know, this entirely new platform and how do we use it and who's really on it and da 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 da. And a lot of the big agencies didn't quite have to grasp the nettle there and respond to that challenge. And it seemed like it was a huge threat to the old. Know, orthodoxies of advertising where I think now we're at a point where it's not a threat and it's universally embraced um, sounds crazy of course digital is universally embraced but that kind of fragmentation yeah. has created opportunities across the board so we, what we get is lots of smaller shops doing lots of interesting things and even if those smaller shops get bought up by networks they're still doing those interesting things within them I think that's yeah. fascinating and exciting uh, and the other big change which challenged the orthodoxies, of course, was where the great advertising work came from. Yeah. Geographically, it was London does great work and North America does great work as well. Perhaps it's a little more hard sell than what we do. And then suddenly, entirely new regions and continents started to produce great work. And it, uh, it comes to everyone yeah. by surprise. You know, Brazil in particular, for a while it was the mm. place to be. Argentina, now we see it in the Far East. Um, and again, all you have to do is rise to the challenge and embrace mm. the fact that now advertising Marcom's great work is coming from the entire world and, um, and be engaged with that and in that and not threatened by it, I think. If you spoke to a younger Neil, yes. uh, if you can remember back to, back to those days, Early. Uh, uh, if you could grab you out, out of uni as you walked out the door with, yeah. your, with your certificate and all the rest of yeah. it, um, what advice would you give? Um, take it serious earlier. Uh, don't think you can, you know, rely on a little bit of creative talent mm. to get somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the, the 90s was a bit of a party for a lot of people. It was very easy just to go, I work in advertising, and it's almost like a lifestyle choice rather than uh, a focused career choice. It took me a while to teach myself that lesson. Um, but one side, and it sounds awful, it sounds like your granddad telling you, buckle down and work hard and you'll get where you want to, son. But, you know, it is about, 
hard work and dedication. I also think this generation, the current crop, yeah. the 20-somethings now, are a different breed to how we were 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, because the uh, culture at college has changed. Mm. Now it's such a massive cash investment to come out with a degree, especially if you do something relatively nebulous, like a creative degree, uh, that you have to justify it by getting into agencies and working through you know, different departments working your way up the ladder, you have to just to pay off that debt. Yeah. Uh, which means they're not just about the drinking and the mm. staying out late and the telling the bleary-eyed stories about what a great night you had. It's a, it seems to be more focused about the work. They seem more, I think, more switched on professional than I certainly was 20 years ago. If you, um, so if you were in the industry, what do you think or what would you have been doing? Um, if I weren't in the industry now, I, if I could pluck myself out, I'd yeah. be on a beach writing novels. You know, okay. I've, I've still yeah. got that writer in okay. me, yeah. uh, and I plug away in my spare time. But we'll maybe go to publish one day. Okay. If I hadn't been doing it all this time, I think I would have been a struggling penniless, hole in the shoe, want to be published novelist. I think that's what I would. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I think that's what <laughs> I'd have been doing all this time. Um, but I, I think the application of your creativity in the commercial sphere. That is advertising it actually very exciting and rewarding. Um, you obviously you've worked on some great brands to date that you've mentioned. If you could have a crack at a brand or a sector, yeah. Um, which one would you love to have a crack at? Well, um, we've got a, a, a small craft beer client here and there. You know, very mm. exciting, and that's a very exciting sector for me. I'd love to yeah. take that experience out and target one of the big established regional brewers. Uh, you know, someone who's got real heritage and authenticity within the UK, because yeah. there are quite a few of them out there, and they yeah. br make delicious beer. Uh, and do the kind of job that was done uh, on Adnams maybe 10 or yeah. 15 years ago when they developed that beautiful, you know, beer from the coast positioning and that illustrative style of communication. I think there's a job to be done raising the profile of those guys and taking on the massive multinational conglomerates, because I think uh, what we brew in this country and those regional brewers is, is the best beer in the world. If you had a magic wand yes. that could grant you one wish, you could change anything in yeah. the industry yeah. today, what would you change? That's a big question. Um, I think it would be for clients and agencies to deal with one another absolutely directly and honestly if you like. Okay. I'm not saying that anyone's dishonest but I think mm. that a lot of the time agencies are afraid of losing a client or upsetting them because there's a thousand other agencies knocking at the door yeah. they can go elsewhere. So grown-up conversations between people who uh, aren't afraid of potentially having their nose put out of a joint mm. uh, to uh, deal directly and honestly with one another as, as professionals. We're offering you know, professional, creative and, uh, mm. and advertising services their marketing and sales, trying to sell their products. Yeah. I think that would actually streamline an awful lot of processes uh, and get people to a result quicker and probably save a lot of money at in, 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 in the same time. Okay, quick fire rounds. Yes. yes. Um, favourite current brands? Red Bull. <laughs> All time favourite brands? Also, uh, Manchester United. Okay, double espresso or green tea? Double espresso. Quadruple espresso. Quadruple. <laughs> Um, brightest person you've worked with without um, upsetting too many people? Okay, uh, probably a chap called Simon Law, who was a planner yeah. and strategist I worked with back in the day, still a yeah. good friend. Um, so in terms of people you come in contact with, clients, agents, whatever, um, who else would you say has been the, the most creative person you've worked with? Creative person, um, uh, probably a director called Nick Livesey, who okay. shot a couple of different commercials for me, he says, you know, for, for brands. <laughs> yeah. uh, one back in the day when I was uh, working on FIFA, one more yeah. recently uh, for, for Red Bull, yeah. works through RSA Films, just a, a great eye, a great guy, and two incredibly different commercials. One is actually a, a, almost a unique animation style he developed himself. The other, a kind of you know, balls out, uh, uh, high energy, but yet beautifully shot uh, ad for Red Bull X Fighters. So yeah, Nick. Independent or network? Independent every time. Money or happiness? Money. Money. Okay. And twist or stick? Twist. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Neil. You're welcome.